So I want to thank Emma. This is her first day of TD conference. It is. Um, how many people here was there, this their first time? Oh. And how many people have had a first AFTD conference? That should be every, should every be hand, everyone, right? guys, every hand. So um, it's a long day. It's a lot of information. It can be emotional. Yes. So I want to thank you for joining me to, to close out the day for everybody. I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. I um, am thrilled to be able to be, oh, I'm not thrilled. <laughs> I shouldn't say I'm thrilled, but I am very happy that I'm able to be here to share some of our story today um, with such a warm and welcoming audience. So thank you. There's compassion in the room and understanding. Sorry, someone's calling me. <laughs> okay. So you and I first met yes. spring of 2022, just about exactly two years ago. Um, it had been announced in the press that Bruce had been diagnosed with aphasia. And so we reached out and you and I got connected and we started talking about once a month or so, yeah. long conversations by phone. Um, I know that while the aphasia diagnosis made sense to you, it didn't explain everything that you were experiencing. Yeah. And I say this because I think most people in the room have had this very experience. And so, as we talked over the months, you kept going to different doctors, mm -hmm. asking additional questions. Mm -hmm. And it was about six months later that he was diagnosed with FTD. That's right. Um, and then it was almost exactly a month later, and you called me and said, we need to go public. Yeah. I want to go public, and I want to do it in partnership if, if you can help us. Yeah. So my first question, Emma, is if you can share with everybody a little bit about how you made that decision and, and why you made that decision to share his diagnosis with FTD. Yeah, there was so many reasons to go public, but um, first and foremost, um, you know, it had been so isolating and, um, you know, I was trying to keep it quiet and, you know, really it was about our daughters and Oh God, I'm going to start crying. Um, I never wanted them to think that this was some kind of family secret that we had to keep. You know, I felt like it was very important for us to come out and say what it was. Um, I wanted them to see us go out and raise awareness um, and on a global scale because that is the kind of reach that their father has. Um, and I know that he would want us to do that. So that was very important. Um, and, you know, I wanted to do something good out of something that was just plain awful, you know? Um, so that was very important for us uh, to come out. And it was really, you know, it was really about our young daughters. Mm -hmm. And I know you said since then <clears throat> um, you've spoken out against the stigma that is associated with different dementia diagnoses and um, the shame that shouldn't come with it, but sadly does. And I think that the fact of, of you coming out is helping to, uh, to fight that, just the fact of it. I hope so. I really hope so. So you went public. There was a lot. He is beloved around the world. If we didn't know that before, I can. My helpline staff can certainly tell you. Yeah. We had to learn to speak a lot of different languages all of a sudden. Yeah, uh, well, so it's wild because Bruce is very popular within the U.S., but his his global reach, you know, is the the love from that was worldwide was absolutely incredible. Actually, it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty pretty astounding. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you can speak to what changed for you and the family after after everybody did know what his diagnosis was. Uh, I could breathe, you know. I could really exhale and sort of just feel this weight uh, sort of lift from my shoulders. But everything changed for the better once we were able to um, disclose his diagnosis. Uh, I was able to seek the support that I so desperately needed for uh, my husband, for our, you know, for our whole family. 
Um, I'm referring to my notes so I don't go rogue because I can easily go rogue. Uh, I, <laughs> I was able to take you know, some power back when we came out with the diagnosis. It's been so beautiful and so many people in this room that have come to me and say, you know, to say thank you and how it's helped them, you know, and as much as it helped me and our family, my hope is that it can help everyone in this room, you know? I'm hearing the stories how, you know, now I can say like, oh, it's the disease that Bruce Willis has and, you know, then light bulbs go off and, you know, people said like, oh, okay. My hope is that you will receive as much compassion and understanding um, as we have. Um, because you know, this disease, it really levels the playing field. It really does. And, you know, sometimes the symptoms might play out differently, but the experience as a care partner, as someone walking this journey, for me is very similar, you know? So I'm going rogue, I told you. Go rogue. I'm going rogue, I'm going rogue. Um, you know, and also being able to, to disclose Bruce's diagnosis, there was so many whispers. And I was really happy just to have a name for the disease and to be able to start to, you know, go out and, you know, try and find a, a treatment and cure, because that is my ultimate goal, treatment and cure. Well, and I just want, I'm going to go rogue for a minute. Oh, yeah, Don't go, go, go rogue. Um, I just want to say, um, obviously known a lot of families going through this over, over the years, and the way you all accomplished it, um, we, I know Demi and the older girls were involved in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And to see you all come together and be able to be unified yeah. in both presenting with the message you shared, but also in protecting him. Mm -hmm. It's a really beautiful thing in, in, a, in a disease that too often really drives families apart. Mm -hmm. It's, um, I mean, the only thing I've come to, to think is it's a testament to him and who he was and the people he attracted in his life. That's right. That loyalty that um, and and care that you all are are tending to now um, speaks volumes not just for you but also for him. Yeah, he's you know very loved within our family and um, you know thankfully for us and our family we've always been close. Um, to say that, you know, we're even closer is, you know, definitely possible for sure. Um, but another thing about coming out with the diagnosis um, and the statement, you know, we had it live on the AFTD's website. And I felt like that was important because, you know, I wanted people to be able to know exactly what FTD is. It's not a flower delivery site. It's like... <laughs> It's an actual, you know, it's a disease, and, and here is the list of, you know, of, of what it is. And so, you know, I thank you for allowing us to do that because I think that was helpful um, for the narrative, you know, and, and so that people could really understand what FTD is. Yeah, and I think from talking to you back then, you were aware that people could go down rabbit holes and get erroneous information. Oh, yeah. And that was another way to make sure that um, things didn't spiral. Um, yeah, it still spirals. <laughs> Even with the information there, they they have a way of spiraling it. Yeah, but yeah. well, control what you can control. That's it. right. That's right. But you you touched on a point where I think again there are a lot of themes in what you're talking about that can resonate in the room, and yet there's probably nobody else in this room or online who's announced their diagnosis via press release, mm -hmm. right? So there that is something that's a little bit different. I wonder if you see the commonalities that you see through the stories, even even though, you know, you guys do have a spotlight that most other families don't? Um, you know, I think that, I think for anyone else as well for us, it was, you know, who to disclose it to, when to disclose it to, and then how much, you know, you want to disclose. So, um, Again, coming out publicly, we were, it was all about, for us, raising awareness, and that was really important for us, um, you know, and, and, and to highlight it, and to be able just to highlight what this disease is, so that, you know, 
we could just let, so that people know that it's like it's out there, it's alive and it's well. And um, you know, my hope is that you know that if you start seeing it for, for some, not for us in this room because we're already seeing that change, but for others if they're starting to notice a change in their loved one. Um, and that even doctors, if they're scratching their head about, you know, what is happening with their patient, that maybe that they would consider that it's FTD, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So what's next now? There's so many things, so many exciting things. So we heard from Senator Michelle Hinchy earlier today, who is just so inspirational, and she has motivated me in, in such a way um, when I, I didn't even know that there was World FTD Awareness Week until it sort of popped up on my, you know, Google alert, because I have a Google alert set for frontotemporal dementia so that I kind of see what's sort of happening in real, in real time. And I, you know, had heard that Senator, the Senator Hinchy had, you know, had this resolution for World FTD Awareness Week, and I was like, well, I want to do that for California. You know, that'd be fun. But that is something that's, you know, in the works already with other advocates that are in California already sort of on the ground running, and I'm just excited to be able to support them. Um, she's also, I'm going to be going to New York mm -hmm. with other advocates too, um, mid-May, as she signs the resolution again for World FTD Awareness Week, which will be the end of September. Is that right? End of September? Yes. Um, and then this bill that she is trying to get passed for an FTD registry in New York, which I would love to see in California one day, but we're gonna Thanks crawl so. before we walk, walk before we want, run step by step. But, you know, I, I, um, I have a lot of hope. You know, I really do have a lot of hope. And, um, and hopefully all of you have some hope as well. And, you know, if you can, sort of get behind all of this. And I know that you're stretched and pulled, but you know, being able to raise awareness and you know, talk to our legislators just to you know, get this, get the word out there would be, yeah. would be really great. Yeah. Well, yeah, as Emma says, um, FTD Awareness Week is the last week in September. I believe it's September 22nd to the 29th this year. Forgive me if that's not e exactly precise. But there'll be a lot of ways for everybody to participate. Um, and I think those of you who heard earlier in the day, advocacy is ramping up. And we need a lot of voices in, across the country. So. Um, Emma would not say this to you, but she said to me several times, she doesn't see herself as a celebrity. She's never been a public person herself. No, my husband's a celebrity. I'm married to one. It's very different. So, you know, if he was up here, he'd be, char you know, speaking and charming you all. And I'm like, no, you know, a nervous wreck. But so just to say it, it she's never been a public speaker and and yeah. i want you to know um so it's that much more was i that bad that you had no to no, no 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 i'm oh, i want to no. say it's i think i can speak for everybody in this room how much it means um to have you be willing be so generous in sharing your family story and i just wanted them to know how how you know it, it's a hurdle for you in many many ways and you are doing a a wonderful job and uh, we look forward to partnering with you in the weeks and months and years to come we will change this we will get a cure we will change the future yeah. and um, you are critical to the effort and everybody else in this room and out That's there right. at home um, there's a role for everyone to play so um, I want to thank you Emma for everything that you've done that you're gonna do and um, I know you've got two little girls watching at home who um, will be very proud of their mom. Yes, yes, yes they're very proud, they're very proud. Um, but I just wanna thank you, Susan, and the AFTD for allowing me to be here. Um, you know, what a great event this is. You know, this is my first, mm -hmm. it won't be my last. Um, and it's been wonderful, again, to be able to connect with so many of you here. And, you know, a lot of tears have been shed today, that's for sure. Um, but how beautiful, like how beautiful, you know, this is a, a very traumatic experience, um, but there's so much beauty that comes from it. So uh. well, thank you. Thank you.